Ah, Lego. Everyone's favorite brand of overpriced plastic building blocks, ranging from Harry Potter to Star Wars, Ninjago to Batman, and Legends of Shima. What the fuck even is a Shima? Now, if you're anything like me, you probably spent a good chunk of your life begging your parents to get you any form of this plastic cocaine. However, after collecting for quite a while, you'll notice you're starting to run out of two things, money and space. Naturally, as with everything in life, the solution is video games. And so, when I have hazardly had the idea to review every LEGO game released to date, starting with 2007's Star Wars The Complete Saga and capping off with 2019's LEGO Movie 2 The Video Game, all of these have been carefully crafted for consoles by Traveler's Tales and then carelessly ported over to PC by the unpaid interns in the back. Fuck you and your RGB keyboard, you'll use a controller and you'll like it. The games chosen for this video had to fall under two guidelines. One, be based off of a licensed IP, and two, be playable. So that leaves me with 21. However, making any man play close to two dozen games that are basically the same thing with a new coat of paint every time would be enough to push anyone to the brink of taking dangerous amounts of illegal and dubious substances. So, I had to call in some favors by harassing my YouTube friends to spend 10 to 15 hours playing and reviewing a LEGO game of their choosing to be in this project. I gave them complete creative control over their own chapter. The fact you're watching this is already a miracle on its own. But without further ado, welcome to a review of every LEGO game released. That is based off a licensed product released after 2007, not Rock Band, Dimensions, Worlds, a handled exclusive, a mobile exclusive, or Builder's fucking journey. I hope you enjoy this. Ah, uh, Star Wars, a pillar of pop culture, and the sole reason most of Red Letter Media's cast, sanity, and livers are forever torn. Problem. Well, it's interesting because, like, The Last Jedi, it's like, oh, everything that was set up in The Force Awakens, none of it matters. Fuck it. And then this movie is like, oh, everything that happened in The Last Jedi, uh, none of it matters. Fuck it. With multiple movies, spin-offs, shows nobody wanted, cartoons you almost remember, cartoons you thankfully remember, and finally video games like Knights of the Old Republic. How much more money do you need, George? Well, well, you see, I, I thought it'd be, be cool to be, you know, let my brand be made into Legos that your dog choked on, huh? And then I'd just, you know, sit back and eat, eat my Panda Express. Oh yeah, I remember the Phantom Menace. Everyone does. Huh, <laughs> lol, sorry. I fell asleep in the theater seeing this. <laughs> but I do remember Jar Jar. Misa Misa only claim to fame is being hurtful stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may not remember any of the prequels aside of the dank memes from them, but I do remember Lego Star Wars. At least when I was a kid seeing this at the local Toys R Us, rest in peace, I thought it would be some sort of dumb cash-in on a now-sleeping franchise yet to be ruined by another evil corporation hellbent on world domination. The games cover each trilogy, starting with the prequels, sadly, but they do things that actually make them enjoyable. The gameplay is very dialogueless, so no terrible child acting or long-winded debates about politics and trades that put you fast to sleep more than any of James Cameron's Avatar promises. You can explore each movie at the diner famously seen in Attack of the Clones, where certain areas of the diner can be broken into Lego coins that can be collected. Don't ask what they can be used for because I never spend them. The gameplay moves along very well with some residual difficulty given the time period they were developed, but it's also very satisfying for long-term fans of the franchise. An issue I have is when you unlock other characters, they don't show up in the cutscenes, and the fact you don't get to build enough or engage in any good moment without it being played as a joke, only in Revenge of the Sith does it actually sort of get serious, but comes across as unintentionally funny. Like, dude, Anakin killed kids in that movie, and you're playing it as a joke? Well, at least the Jedi Temple level was BEAST! Even if I'm not a fan of Star Wars prequels in LEGO form, nothing will ever top the joy I felt killing Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Ahem. 
Yeah, for their first attempt, Lego and Lucasfilm did a pretty good job capturing the funny and action-packed moments of the prequels, but thankfully, once again, none of the dialogue. Now on to the OG trilogy. Spoiler alert, it totally slaps. The gameplay has definitely improved. Despite only using the single map area to select the movies like the infamously anti-droidite bar Cantina on Tatooine. Unacceptable. This game allows you to relive the iconic space battles from the Death Star to the frozen planet of Hoth using Palpatine's escapades in misusing Empire funds. There's no dialogue in this either, but you can feel in its silliest cartoon way it's following the beats of the original Star Wars, if they were the special edition versions. <coughs> Gross. Now some of the issues are still present where you can't use characters in cutscenes you switch to or who are not part of the story, which is, you know, a little sad. I'd love to see Jar Jar go up against OG Vader and be utterly obliterated. Ah, revenge. In conclusion, the LEGO Star Wars franchise is very fun. If you're a massive fan of the franchise, then you'll definitely enjoy it. Just stay away from the sequel trilogy. Please, for your sanity's sake. Drive safely, folks! Right, I have four to six minutes to convince you that I have the privilege of reviewing the pinnacle of LEGO games. So without further ado... Time to begin. This game makes a clear stance on anti-Semitism. In it, you can punch and kill Nazis. Does LEGO Batman let you kill Nazis? Didn't think so. LEGO Batman is anti-Semitic. All the other reviews in this project, they mean nothing compared to what LEGO Indiana Jones has to offer you. Am I biased? Yes. Do I care? Absolutely not. This game has it all. Adventure, Indiana, and plenty of Jones. You see this? This is where boys become men. I've been a fully grown adult since I was eight. The quality of a LEGO game is directly proportional to the variety of firearms it has. So you can see why this one is the best. My favorite thing to do in this game? Steal priceless artifacts with incredible historical significance and local sentimental value from their native lands and hoard them in the land of the white man. I've owned this game for 12 years. I was born to make this review. I know it inside and out. On the CD copy, a 99% of the game got the maximum amount of studs you can acquire and achieve true adventurer on every level. On the Steam version, I have about 78%. I would show you the CD copy if I could, but the laptop my 12 year old save file is on went to a different school. You wouldn't know her. Now, in LEGO Star Wars, you can unlock a secret character, Indiana Jones, which admittedly is pretty cool. But in LEGO Indiana Jones, you can unlock Han Solo. I think it's pretty obvious which game is better. Now, you might think that with all the references, LEGO Indiana Jones Jones is leeching off the back of LEGO Star Wars. TT Games were afraid that LEGO Star Wars would be a financial failure, so they inserted LEGO Star Wars references to LEGO Indiana Jones to remind people that this game even existed, and clearly worked. This game walked so that LEGO Star Wars could remove Yoda's hover chair and the complete saga, because someone working at TT Games or LucasArts has lost their frontal lobe. If you're a fan of LEGO Star Wars, you owe your gratitude for its success to LEGO Indiana Jones. Thank you. LEGO Indiana Jones. Not convinced yet? You should be. Movement. You can literally dodge bullets. Combat. Violent decapitation. Out of monkey. Multiplayer. Thorazine. Out of where did I put the Thorazine? Puzzles. 12. Out of 10. Level design. What? Out of the fuck. Plot. White Caucasian historian travels around the world liberating local artifacts under the guise of being a good guy. Because there are Nazis. And we're not Nazis. Look at how bad they are and how good we are. Oh, this golden statue? Of course it's mine, why do you ask? Overall score? I'm gonna eat this friggin' burger. <laughs> Sir, you've destroyed everything in the palace aside from the walls. We're gonna have to ask you to leave. LEGO Indiana Jones was the height of the LEGO video game franchise. They had the perfect game in the palm of their hands. And someone at TT Games decided to ignore an entire game's worth of development and learning to go on and create LEGO Indiana Jones. The adventure continues for the Wii. Probably the same person who removed Yoda's hover chair. Look and how they massacred my boy. Help, Stipro, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck. Ooh, watch out, cunt, I'm gonna take your clothes off. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> dude, how did you do that? If you haven't played this game, you are literally worse than my crippling habit of alienating everyone I meet by initially making friends with them and then ghosting them over the course of six to 12 business days. Thank you, Mr. Pants, for retweeting Zany's call to action. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here, enjoying the concrete walls of his content creation sweatshop. 
Alright, I have to go. Demons are calling me. They say if I can get you to subscribe to Zany, they will reattach my knees. And if I'm really good, maybe even my dignity. I'm not letting you out until you finish the video! This one old fella named Aristotle once said that it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. And let me tell you, you know, it doesn't matter if your whole world comes crashing down around you, as long as you focus on how good LEGO Batman the video game for the Sony PlayStation 2 really is, then you're pretty much untouchable. This piece of media can be your light in the darkness, for it shines brightest among the stars that it calls neighbor. That's right, I'm finally making this claim official. LEGO Batman the Video Game is the greatest LEGO video game of all time. Are you fucking kidding me? For a little bit of context as to where my stinky opinions come from, here is every LEGO video game I have played, and here is every LEGO video game I haven't played. As you can see, I'm quite the expert. Apparently I've missed out on some classics over the years, but I am glad I've at least experienced the OGs that most people who are still interested in LEGO games have nostalgia for. Is this a fucking bazooka? <laughs> Holy shit! With that being said, I've never seen or played a LEGO video game that I like quite as much as the first LEGO Batman. I thought for a while that I liked LEGO Batman 2 a little bit more, but I have since stabbed old me in the back and called him a fool for that opinion because it's just wrong. At its core, LEGO Batman uses the same LEGO formula you've come to know and love, with your bread collection and your brick connection and your character selection, so I think I'll focus a bit more on what makes this game stand out for me among the rest. A lot of people say this LEGO game is weirdly unnerving at times, like you'll just be walking around in a level and something about it just feels kind of off. You get a bit of that I'm being watched feeling, you know? And that's because of how much effort went into matching the vibe that Gotham City is supposed to exude. To me, it doesn't matter at all what the medium is. This city, Gotham City, is meant to be a grimy cesspit. Whether you're walking through a carnival, chilling at the club, standing in the middle of an ice cream factory for some reason, fear and dark uncertainty runs in this city's veins. And the fact that they managed to capture that feeling in every single level of a LEGO video game designed for children is just really impressive to me. It's kind of hard to touch on a franchise that is often quite dark and bleak while still targeting it towards a younger audience, but much like the animated series, it strikes that perfect balance, you know? The style of this game as a package is just great. I mean, you've got that creepy and often whimsical soundtrack, the dramatic level design, the gothic art direction. It all just comes together to form a very unique soup that I honestly don't think you'll find in any of the other LEGO titles. Although I could be wrong. After all, of this list, I haven't played 16 of them, but you get what I mean. You can even see in the concept art just how far they were planning on leaning into the over-the-top, gritty architecture of Gotham and the eerier side to Batman's world in general. It's a bit of a shame that the sequels of LEGO Batman just dropped this approach in favour of a more general superhero look and feel. I mean, don't get me wrong, LEGO Batman 2 is bussin' in its own ways, but it just didn't retain any of that eeriness of the original, and I think that's part of what made the first one so special. If there's a franchise you like and a LEGO game is made from its DNA, then chances are you'll really appreciate the references and retellings regardless of if you enjoy the gameplay loop itself. Another thing I think is particularly unique about LEGO Batman is that it focuses more on serving as a kind of introduction to the Batman as a whole. The animated series is certainly the core inspiration for the look and feel, but it doesn't follow the exact events of any movie or trilogy or anything. It's just one long run through a ton of Batman iconography while telling its own little good guy bad guy story in the process. 
I'm so glad they made this choice because I think it was a great way to show off as much of the world as they possibly could for the sake of variety rather than just sticking to one specific movie or trilogy's contents and rules. The game just constantly feels fresh this way since they have the advantage of <laughs> using one of the most versatile characters in existence. It's, it's kind of cheating when you think about it. You could put a level in a grocery store and say Lego Mr. Freeze is storing Nora in the frozen goods aisle and it would still kind of make sense, whereas Star Wars and Indiana Jones followed the rules of their respective movies more closely. <laughs> Why is R2-D2 in my exploring game? The world of Batman in general is just perfect for a game like this, and stylistically they managed to stay faithful to every piece they drew from. This game is like a really good first Batman comic, if that makes sense. You're introduced to a ton of the characters, you experience a bunch of iconic locations, it really is just a great summary of Batman's world and the things that happen within it. Now I know I've only talked about the good things here, but please don't be mistaken, there are plenty of things wrong with this game too, most notably the obscene nudity spread throughout the game, it's actually very off-putting and unexpected at times. Bruce Wayne's cheeks make far too many appearances, which I guess would explain the R rating, but... LEGO Indiana Jones is one of the greatest LEGO games up there with the likes of LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga and the classic everyone's favorite LEGO Rock Band. And with it being such a good game, inevitably it is going to be hard to come up with a worthy successor. So anyways, this is about LEGO Indiana Jones 2. LEGO Indiana Jones 2 is not actually what I remembered it to be. I remembered it being more like The Complete Saga, taking the missions from the first game, putting them into a new game, and then also adding on a whole new bunch of missions. But it's not that. Instead, this game's main focus is on the brand new movie, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. As stated before, the main focus is on the new movie, but that does not mean it doesn't have missions of old movies. In fact, it has three whole sets of missions for each original movie, which honestly, they could have just not done. But no, they did put in more stuff. The issue for me though, is that most of these missions are really simple, either being a boss battle, a vehicle mission in which you kill waves and waves of vehicles, or an on-foot mission where you kill waves and waves of vehicles, and every once in a while a puzzle mission. The puzzle missions were good, I enjoyed them, LEGO has good puzzles, but the other stuff was just kinda a trek to get through. There also was no real connecting story between these missions, it was just like, here's a scene from the first movie, here's another scene from the first movie, all main set pieces but no connection, which whatever. And with each original movie having their own pack of missions, they also have their own hub worlds, being the small open world segment that has some little puzzles to do within it as well. It's really cool to be honest, it's a lot more than I would have expected. But on to the main part of the game, which, I mean it's, it's a Lego game. It's good, it's the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull story, it has some fun boss battles, it has some good scenes, and like, it's just a LEGO game. What more could you ask for? The game includes lots of famous scenes from the movie, just like everyone. Uh, you have the classic, the metal all coming to the box where the skull is. You have the getting in the fridge with the big nuclear explosion. Uh, you have the famous monkey scenes when the monkeys steal the little, little turn tiles and you gotta give them bananas. <laughs> everyone knows that scene. I love, I love this part, so they're, like, they're fun. It's cool. It was in the first game, I think, too. All in all, though, it's just another LEGO game. I don't think there's anything really to go crazy about, but it is just a regular LEGO game. That is if we ignore one of the best parts. Other than just the main stories, there is one small little side segment. Sandbox. In LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, there was an unlockable area called LEGO City, and in this you'd be timed to see how quickly you can get to 1 million studs by breaking stuff, and there's a bunch of little small puzzles and things like that and vehicles. This game takes that idea of, oh, here's a little sandbox world, and just is like, hey, play with LEGOs. You have this full sandbox where you're able to put in different characters, different things, and you can make your own small levels. It's 
really insane. And I remember spending hours upon hours of time playing this level. It was just awesome. The sandbox really, I think, is the greatest thing of this game. It just has a lot of potential. But going back to it now, I couldn't fully figure out what I wanted to do with it. I feel like it might be a little complicated to get into, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just too used to modern sandbox games being so simple like Minecraft that something a little bit more complicated just threw me for a loop. I also didn't spend much time on it, but as a kid, I fucking loved it. I played it all the time. I, like I said, I spent hours on sandbox doing really dumb shit, and it was just great. But in the end, I really do have to say, LEGO Indiana Jones 2 is a LEGO game. I don't know if it holds up to the first game, I haven't played it recently, but I have so many fond memories of the first game that I just don't with the second game. And maybe that just comes down to the fact that it is based on a movie that most people don't like and I don't think was anything super special from what I remember, while the classic Indiana Jones movies were absolutely amazing movies. That's okay, not every single LEGO game is going to be the incredibleness of the complete saga, or LEGO Batman, or LEGO Indiana Jones 1. Sometimes they're just fun games, and I definitely think that you should still try it. Give it a try, there's no reason not to. There are usually $5 on Steam during sales. If you like the first one, pick up the second one too, because it's just more LEGO fun. Anyways, you should go subscribe to Zany. He's fucking really cool, and he let me be in this collab, and it was really cool, and you guys should go subscribe to him, like, because, like, if you subscribe to him, you're also really cool, and also, maybe I'll give you a big old smooch. <laughs> Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. Let me tell you about this game. Previous to this one, Lego already had three Star Wars games under their belt. The first game, the original trilogy, and the complete saga. And not just for the games, but for LEGO in its entirety, Star Wars is an absolute moneymaker for them. So when Cartoon Network's Star Wars The Clone Wars took off, and LEGO started making sets of vehicles and scenes from the show, it was inevitable that there would be a video game for it. I have been a fan for the LEGO games ever since LEGO Star Wars 1, so naturally being a fan of the show when I was a kid, I was really excited to get this game. And boy howdy was I not disappointed. Everything about this game just feels great. The cinematics are better, the graphics are updated, it's still 60 FPS, at least in the PC version, and the sheer amount of content that they put into this game, at least for the time, was pretty amazing. Of course, we have the different levels, which are mostly taken from various episodes of the show, such as Ambush, Shadow of Malevolence, and Defenders of Peace. The game also seems to have nothing to do with the Clone Wars movie, except for one level where you play as Count Dooku trying to get Jabba the Hutt's son from Anakin and Ahsoka. But how accurate are these levels to their respective episodes? Well, I would say they pretty much nail it on the head. Duel of the Droids has the fight between R2 and R3, Blue Shadow Virus has the chase for the annoying LEP86C8 droid, and Lair of Grievous has the scene where Nadar Veb is killed by Grievous, while also adding that special comedic charm that LEGO puts into their games. There's also a huge array of characters to play as, with major characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Hello there. and Asajj Ventress, to minor characters such as that fucking annoying LEP868 droid! And the way you obtain most of these characters is not by buying them in a shop, but by finding them around the hub world and purchasing them. I think that's a lot more fun than just sitting through a menu. However, you do have to buy vehicles through menus, which I guess the developers thought they didn't have enough room to do the same thing they did with the characters. Guess they saved that for LEGO Batman 2. In the previous Star Wars games, when completing mini-kits, they became scenes or objects from their respective levels and lined up like a museum attraction. However, in this game, they give you characters to play as, specifically characters from the original trilogy, like Darth Sidious, Han Solo, and Princess Leia, as well as other interesting characters like Battle Damage Darth Vader, and even Starkiller from The Force Awakens! Now that is awesome! There are two types of vehicles in this game. There are ships that are used to fly in the hub world in various levels, and there are ground vehicles which are used in ground battles. This is where the fun begins. These are much different than the normal levels, where you have bases and weapons that you have to build and use to destroy the enemy's bases. Once the enemy has been wiped out, or a specific base is built on a specific plot of land, then you are victorious. These levels are massive. 
and they give you lots of studs. Rightfully so, since you need studs you collect to build bases. It's so much fun watching the enemy's builds just completely obliterate and having all this destructive power at your fingertips. Definitely one of my favorite features in any LEGO game. The Bounty Hunter missions also come back and are unlocked by completing a level where you play as the Bounty Hunters like Cad Bane and Robonino, where they break out Zero the Hut from prison. Overall, this game just feels like a complete upgrade from the Complete Saga and helped pave the way for newer and bigger things for future LEGO games. It's certainly the game that I have the most fond memories of, and I would absolutely recommend this to anyone who wants to get into LEGO games, or anyone who likes Star Wars. It holds a special place in my heart as my favorite LEGO game, and I think it's very well deserved. But you know who also holds a special place in my heart? Zanyverse. Thank you so much, Zany, for letting me be in this collab and letting me gush about LEGO Star Wars 3. And if you have not done so, you should subscribe to Zanyverse because he's just a great creator. And if you don't, then I'll send you your very own LEP868 droid to annoy the shit out of you every day. I think I rest my case. How's it going, assholes? My name is Estelar J, and God damn it, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. Jack Sparrow, what an incredible character. A funnier anti-hero than Deadpool, and a more iconic trickster than Loki. The first scene where he sails into port is such a memorable, classic scene that immediately tells you everything you need to know about our main character without a single word of spoken dialogue. This whole movie is incredible. Not a single character goes underused. The progression is intriguing. The ending is satisfying. There are no down points in this movie. And... It came out in the exact same month that I was born in. Now, all I'm saying is that July 2003 currently has a 100% masterpiece rate between me and Pirates of the Caribbean, so do with that information what you will. Fast forward almost nine years later, and eight-year-old Joe sees a used copy of Pirates of the Caribbean, the Lego video game, at GameStop. For any kids watching, uh, GameStop was this place you could go to to get, like, severely ripped off and maybe walk away with a cool game. And also last year, it kind of broke the entire United States stock market, which was funny. But anyways, I bought the game, and wow was I enthralled. I fucking loved this game. However, I also thought that Spirit Tracks was the definitive Zelda game, aka I had smooth brain and I had absolutely no idea what made a game good. So how does this game hold up today? The first thing you gotta notice are the cutscenes. Remember what I said about wordless storytelling? Guess what, fucko? This is only wordless storytelling. Just look at this opening cutscene. Look at all these guys faint in the sun. That is genius foreshadowing of what is yet to happen to Elizabeth. Where's your foreshadowing, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga for the Nintendo Wii? Shit game? Good game. Then, check this out. The Commodore goes to take the sword from Will, and look! <laughs> it's a carrot! It's a carrot, not a sword, you fucking idiot! The comedy is on point on every turn. To me, the most easily noticeable thing about the gameplay is how it improves off of the previous Star Wars LEGO games. Remember in the complete saga when you wanted to swap characters and it made you do this stupid-ass soul transfer thing while looking at the character that you wanted to play as and it got it wrong all the fucking time? Remember that shit? Boom. Character wheel. Remember how the projectile characters could only shoot directly in front of them? Boom. Aim controls. Remember how when you were playing with someone else and you went too far away from each other, it fucking pulled you and it was the most agonizing shit on the planet? Introducing split screen with this incredibly old and very, very popular technology that you somehow didn't catch on to until now. You can just have two people on different parts of the map. Imagine that. <laughs> In the first level alone, they got you finding buried treasure, fighting bosses, rolling on barrels, going underwater with barrels, stealing ships, ziplining, uh, doggy. Compare that with level 1 of Star Wars, where you swing your sword at some enemies and play with blocks. Listen, all I'm saying is doggy, no doggy, good game, shit game. The first level is literally called negotiations. I didn't know what the fuck that word meant when I was a kid, much less want to play a video game about it. What is wrong with the fucking prequels, man? They ruin everything they touch. Meanwhile, in this fucking game, I'm shooting cannons at the enemy while simultaneously defending my ship from invaders. Woo! Yes, that man just took a cannonball to the head, and yes, the cannons are fully automatic, but don't worry about that. Listen to the soundtrack. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is just Sea of Thieves, and that might be true, but look at this loading screen, okay? What does Sea of Thieves have, huh? 
yeah. The unique ideas in this game never stop. They are always throwing something new at you. The cutscenes are great for kids, the difficulty level is a nice spot, and the characters are iconic. The only issue I do have with this game is this fucking dark ass dimly lit cave level. When I was a kid, the Wii was in the living room and we had a lot of sunlight, so it was basically impossible to see shit while trying to do this level because of how dark it was. So other than that, a great game. I don't know if Zanny wants me to do like a number rating. Ah, uh, fuck. We'll give it eight Johnny Depps out of three Orlando Blooms. Thanks for watching. YouTube.com slash TheStellarJ. Go subscribe. Thank you very much. LEGO Star Wars was, at least in my recollection, the first real game I ever played. I remember so vividly picking up my PlayStation 2 controller back in 2005 and spending hours trying to get past that goddamn Geonosis level. So, it's safe to say my love of the LEGO game stems from the very beginning. And although I loved each and every subsequent game TT Games made to follow, with each one I felt the formula becoming more and more worn out, and by 2012 found myself somewhat disenchanted by these games that somewhat defined my childhood. So when I heard about the release of LEGO Batman 2 in 2012, I was fairly indifferent, especially after experiencing Arkham City just the year before. It's not like that. Man's gonna just drop in and get us. He's way too busy. We'll see. It's the freaking man! But from the moment the game released in June of that year, it was clear that the LEGO games were far from dying out. In fact, it looked like they were about to put out their best content yet. The first thing by far that stood out to me when I opened this new journey of the Cape Crusader, other than the sudden voice cast, which we will talk about later, was the sprawling open world of Gotham City, grander than any of the like we'd seen in previous games. Whilst yes, the LEGO games had their hubs, and LEGO Harry Potter built itself into having a fully explorable Hogwarts, those distinctly separate areas couldn't compare to the near seamless full city that LEGO Batman 2 brought to the table, in a world before Marvel superheroes Manhattan. This world is a completionist dream, with the exploration possibilities making up nearly half of the total content in the game. However, that is by no means me saying that the classic linear levels of Batman 2 disappoint. Thanks to the massive new characters expanding this LEGO DC universe, the variety and replayability of each of these levels increases tenfold. And if you're like me, replayability is the single most important aspect of any LEGO Star Wars level. No longer can you fully complete the game by relying entirely on the Cape Crusader's suits and technology, needing to utilize the flight of Superman, the building abilities of Green Lantern, and plenty of other unique character traits if you want to get the full experience of this game. Speaking of the rest of the characters, this is where we come to a slight hitch in what thus far is a near perfect LEGO game. The story of this game, or more specifically, TT Games' decision to include fully voiced characters. It was a thrill to finally see myself on the big screen! Look at that face! It's like, what's he gonna say? What's going to come out of that mouth of his? Now, whether you're a fan of LEGO games being voiced or not, it's hard to deny that the cast here is absolutely star-studded, with the likes of Troy Baker, Laura Bailey, and Clancy Brown all bringing their absolute A-game. And whilst the game maintains the classic comedic LEGO tone, the Switch to scripted characters definitely had a knock-on effect on the games to come, and is still to this day polarizing amongst fans. I don't personally mind the decision in LEGO Batman 2 itself, but considering the ramifications it had for future games, I would have rather TT Games had never made this decision. An aspect of the game far less polarizing, however, 
however, were the vehicle sections of the campaign. Linear, on-wheel set pieces that really provided a dull, mindless experience throughout. If you ask anyone what their least favourite mechanic of this game is, 9 out of 10 times they bring up these missions. And although they don't destroy the experience of the game, they definitely bring it down from what could have been a pretty flawless sequel. Regardless though, LEGO Batman 2 still stands as one of the single best entries into the LEGO game series. It stands as a testament to TT Games' ability to evolve and build on their formula, whilst maintaining the core of what their fanbase love. It stands as an appreciation of Batman and of all things DC. But most of all, it stands as the single, one and only, good Superman game ever made. And for that reason alone, it will always have a special place in my heart. Ah, Lego The Lord of the Rings, a game I always remember fondly playing on my i3 core laptop underneath my blanket at 3am. I had to play without sound so I could hear if my mom was coming downstairs to check on me. Sacrificing my immersion in gaming experience so my ass got not beat. I actually have never quite finished the game because I did end up getting caught and doing the neighbor's chores for a week. And I never saw that laptop again either. Uh, so anyway, when I agreed to be a part of this project, I was really excited to relive the same game I hadn't played in 8 plus years. And this video has been a great excuse to get back into LEGO games in general. Here's a little bit about the game I love so much that I haven't played it in 8 years. Enjoy! The Lord of the Rings LEGO game was released in 2012 by Traveler's Tales Games, or more popularly known as TT Games, who had, in 2007, been acquired by Warner Bros. So at this point, the studio knew what they were doing and had already released several other successful LEGO games, including Star Wars The Complete Saga, and do you need more than that? The levels are designed very well, having just enough challenge and variety to keep you engaged while they remain fun and lighthearted in the spirit of LEGO games. There are 18 of these levels in LEGO The Lord of the Rings, following the events of the film trilogy very closely, even pulling voice lines from the films for the cutscenes and replicating some key scenes in classic LEGO cutscene fashion. All the levels have a decent amount of replayability in free play mode, if you had a particular part of a level or a boss fight that you enjoyed, or just to finish collecting the mini kits hidden around each level to construct collectible items. Other items can be forged using mithril bricks you find by the blacksmith in Bree. There are over 80 of these items, ranging from weapons and armor to silly hats and implements. My favorite of these items is definitely the Ent Draft. What is the Ent Draft, you may be wondering? Well, when you whack somebody with it, it makes their head comically large. I refer to this as the South Park Syndrome. How would you like to suck my balls? Okay, moving on, the game is designed similarly to other LEGO games where different characters have different unique abilities which are necessary to navigate your way through levels. Hobbits can fit in small spaces, elves can jump higher than others, uh, Aragorn can break things others can't with his shiny sword, and so on and so forth. This creates gameplay that stays interesting and makes you think about how you are making your way through each level and also increases the replayability of levels, as some mini kits are inaccessible in story mode and have to be retrieved with another character or item in free play. All in all, the game is a must play for anyone who hasn't, and makes for an excellent revisit for anyone who hasn't played it in a while. And now that I have fun out of material, don't forget to subscribe to this dude Zanyverse, he's an absolute lad who unlike myself actually knows how to edit. I, uh, I'm about to head out. Oh, holy shit, it's my turn already. Wow. <laughs> Alright. <coughs> Gather round, my little poggy woggies. You may call me Hunk, and I'll be hosting this section of the video for the... Lego Star Wars The Video Game Handheld Port. Wait, that's not right. Oh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. That was it. Right, right. Lego Marvel Super Heroes. The 2013 classic spawned from our collective wet dreams. At least I hope it's collective. I'm not weird, am I? Am I... Lego sexual? Surely I'm just like everyone else. Now, 
This game is fucking epic. Nobody talks about it, and that's for good reason. It's basically flawless, and as we all know, only divisive games cause debate. Not only is this the epitome of LEGO games, but Marvel games in general. You get to play as this diverse cast of those licensed characters who, for the most part, each have their own unique powers and abilities. I don't see any other game that has Spider-Man and also Howard the Duck. He's a talking duck with a bazooka, you guys, alongside your favorite Marvel characters. Amazing. That campaign is oh so juicy, full of destruction, betrayals, daring heroics, patriotism, capitalism, fascism, furryism, ismism, all the good stuff you could ever dream of. I kid you not, audience, he turns himself into a teapot and calls himself Mr. Fantastic. Funniest shit I've ever seen. Frankly, I don't see any other LEGO game being as robust and dynamic as this one, with so much of that classic LEGO charm packed into it. It, it just works. Philosopher Theodore Howard, 1337. So, what happens in this game? Well, this is Traveler Tales' third endeavor into a fully original story, and it kicks all the ass. Galactus, the world eater, is hungry and is looking for new worlds to eat. So he enlists the help of the Silver Surfer, who is a smaller, weaker, balder man from a non-existent planet. Scouting the universe, he locates our feeble home of Mother Russia. Minus the Russia part, of course, he finds your mother, which is like a four-course meal to Galactus. But, uh-oh, he totally wipes out Server Dude. And then there's, uh, there's something about cosmic bricks. Dr. Doom is involved or something. I passed out from excitement for like 10 missions. But when I came to, Loki was forcing all the baddies to join up and try to defeat the heroes. But they fail. And like, Magneto has an asteroid or something, and is launching it from an island of dinosaurs. And like, Loki's on the asteroid, and he mind controls Galactus. So this forces the entire Marvel crew to team up and try to beat the both of them. Ah. What the fuck is this game? Why do I love it so much? Well, the primary reason, as you probably guessed, is nostalgia. I'm not afraid to admit it. Thinking back to those simpler times when I first played the game gives it a lot of charm. This was the Lego game that had just come out when I first made a Steam account, and I got to experience the post-Wii era of Lego games. It was awesome getting to play with and as this all-star cast of comic book characters which I grew up with. You see, the X-Men and early MCU movies were a big hit when I was growing up. So those got me into comics and superhero media in general. And those early comics I've become acquainted with hold a very special place in my heart. This game was so much bigger than I could have possibly ever imagined. It was essentially a Marvel crossover game with the Lego theme just slapped onto it. But this was Traveler's Tales offering to us what was, at the time at least, the LEGO game with the most actual variety in terms of gameplay. It wasn't like the days of LEGO Star Wars or Hell, even LEGO Batman 2, where only a handful of abilities were put in and then each one was slapped onto like 20 different characters. Well, there's a, there's a little bit of that, but this selection feels purposeful and I really felt every mechanic shine fitting together like one of those metal puzzles. You know, you could really play to your heart's content and find multiple uses for your favorite marble characters. It would be really difficult to shit on the legacy of such an astounding entry in TT Games' resume. 10 out of 10. LEGO The Hobbit is probably the worst LEGO game I've had the displeasure of playing, and I've held that opinion since I played it back in 2015. So, when I started asking my friends to pick a game, any game, I was very disappointed that none of them happened to choose it. I mean, what are the odds of that? 4.76%, I fucking checked. The Hobbit trilogy is as unnecessary as the Star Wars sequels. Or the Star Wars prequels for that matter. So, after spending about 10 hours replaying the game on my PC, is it as bad as I remember? Eh, 
not really. But it is far from good. So, let me run you through this shit. The game follows the trilogy of Hobbit films released from 2012 to 2014. In it, you play as a kooky cast of noticeably short people, ranging from hobbits to dwarves to zoophiles. The game starts off in the most PS3 possible resolution known to man. After doing some tinkering and making the game semi-playable, we are treated to a crisp, capped at 30fps cutscene. The gameplay is most comparable to Lord of the Rings because it is basically the same thing, just with more short people, but I digress. This game does bring in a few unique new ideas. The first one of these are resources. These are items you find by breaking shit in levels and in the open world. These items range from different types of gems, to regular planks of woods, to chicken, which is dropped by killing orcs. I still don't know how this works. Gold bricks have been replaced by Mitchell bricks, just like in The Lord of the Rings. Minikits have been turned into a box instead of the insanely recognizable classic minikits. The company of dwarves which you play throughout a majority of the levels each come with their own unique ability that only they have. Bofur can smash cracked plates, Bomber can become a human trampoline and Keeley can shoot targets with his bow. You've also got Gandalf who can light up dark areas and Radagast who sticks his this glowing thing up a rabbit's ass to make it feel better. I'm serious, he fucks animals. This whole concept of unique character abilities is thrown out of the window with the addition of treasure items. There's four in each level and they are mostly just the character specific abilities but for everyone. What? Why? The first part of the game is just as boring as actually watching the first movie as nothing really happens here. Flashback, Bilbo gets ganked by a company of dwarves, another flashback, kill a trio of million karma redditors, loot a cave, meet the zoo file, kill a goblin that's got the same chin structure as my dad, steal a dubious trinket from this little fella, before then climbing some trees and flying away from our problem. The second part starts with another fucking flashback, the company slaughters a family of moles, not canon, I think. Get chased by a bear, get chased by spiders, and get chased by mommy elf. Game crash, not canon. Second game crash, still not canon. Break into a peaceful fishing town and steal all of their weapons, leaving them completely helpless to the absolute horde of orcs on our tail. Go find the Dark Lord where Azok shows up to fight Gandalf and Radagast. Also not canon, it's from the third movie. Bilbo and the gang break into the mountain where we find the Arkenstone as well as a very angry dragon. The third part begins right where we left off. Oh wait, never mind, the third part was supposed to be a DLC, which still does not exist 8 years after release. I am free, much like Dobby. Hey dumbass, that's my segment. After the credits, you're dropped into this absolute hell nightmare of an open world. At least it's a little bit more bearable than the Vita version, as it's actually open, not just a confusing maze of pathways. So, is this a good LEGO game? Eh, you're probably better off playing the next one. 13 dwarves out of 3 cave throws. Alright, see you in another 10 games or so. Okay, so I got four minutes to review Lego Batman 3. So we're, you know, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's work together. Come on, follow me. All right, so Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. It's a Lego game. Is it a good Lego game? I'm not entirely sure because I I remember playing like Lego Star Wars and stuff on the GameCube, but I, I didn't get assigned that one. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because if I wouldn't have got that first one and I wanted to do Star Wars, I would have got the, the sequel trilogy. Man, I feel that I was by a Yankee. Anyways, um, <laughs> so Lego Batman 3, you play as Batman and a bunch of the other DC superheroes, and Brainiac shows up, and he like tries to shrink the world into like a tiny ball so he can keep it because he's gotten tired of collecting cities or something. So you team up with the superheroes, and you go, and you attack them, and it's just a Lego game. I don't know why, but I feel like I remember the older Lego games actually having everything being made out of Lego. And for some reason, it's weird seeing all the LEGO characters run around and there's not like a bunch of LEGO stuff. You can still build stuff like in LEGO Star Wars. I also remember none of them ever talking, so it was kind of jarring to watch them all speak. And it's really bad, you know, because you go down to like the Hall of Justice from their fucking Flying Fortress of Solitude thing. And there's like a cat there and he makes a bunch of meowing noises, but it's clearly a guy. So that was weird. I didn't like that. Uh, Killer Croc and the Kill That's pretty good funny. Guys, you also, like, you fly in the game. So you, you pick Wonder Woman and you fly. And it plays the theme song. And that's kind of neat. 
Uh, but the one thing I really didn't like about it was that every character's got like 80 fucking gadgets. It doesn't matter if you're Batman, or if you're the Joker, or if you're Cyborg, or if you're Lex Luthor. They've all got like some of, like, pretty much a mixture of like all of these abilities. And it's really annoying to have to switch between them. Because all I've got to do is hacking, so I better use Robin's hacker thing, but Lex Luthor is also on my team. So why can Robin use the hacker thing and Lex Luthor can't use the hacker thing when they both have the same fucking ability? Or why does Batman have to interact with this specific thing when Cyborg's got the exact same ability? It, it's annoying and it kind of pisses me off. It kind of pisses me off. I muted my microphone. And I'm keeping it in. Anyways, also, like, Conan O'Brien is there? Why? I get it, you wrote Monorail, congratulations, good for you. But why are you in this video game? But why are you in Death Stranding? It should have been me! I should have been in Death Stranding! But, I have to stave off my fantasy of turning a late night talk show host into red paste. Especially because Lego Batman 3 won't let me kill Conan O'Brien, and he's fucking everywhere, and that pisses me off, and I don't like it. There's a lot of moving parts in LEGO Batman 3. Like... But it's not, like, it feels like the same exact shit. But it's just more convoluted. And I don't understand why. Because apparently the previous game had an open world thing. But this one doesn't. It's like a... Hall of Justice fucking, like, thing from... LEGO Star Wars, the, the, the original trilogy. You know, you walk around Moss Eisley, and then you, you kick open the doors, and you go in there, and you ride the fucking elephant thing, and you punch the stuff, and you... And you do the build and all that shit? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't like it. It's kind of dumb. Um, this would be a better review if I wasn't given, like, four minutes to talk about it. But, yeah, I, like, played two hours of this game. It's a game. Should you play it? I don't fucking know, dude. Do you like Batman? Do you like Legos? If you do, pick it up on the Steam set. It's Lego Batman. You can't play online, though. That pisses me off. Why? If I'm playing online, if they allow online play or something like that, well, why does why do we have to stay on the same fucking screen? Because I noticed that shit, too, in all the other new Lego games. Like, I remember you just ran around. It, did, it wasn't, like, gay split-screen stuff. Or it wasn't stupid split-screen stuff. I don't know. I don't care. Cole! Ah! Oh, Brom, what do you want? I need you to review another game. Okay. Lego Movie. Ew, ew, fuck, no. No, give it to the other guy. Give it to the next guy. I fuck you, then. Man. I feel bad for whoever's about to review that game. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. LEGO the movie the video game starts off in the best possible way, by having a resolution worse than my phone by default. I guess little indie company Warner Bros forgot what a PC is and couldn't even be bothered with at least a couple of resolutions. The true game, however, starts after a cutscene that looks like it's being eaten by the void. Get used to it. And man! The gameplay exists. Okay, so you'll be spending half your game. Oh, um, found the graphic settings. Nice. You'll be spending half your game fighting with one button and the other half building stuff automatically to solve a quote unquote puzzle that you clearly didn't do in every single other Lego game. The shiny new gameplay spin, however, is a Dora the Explorer style match the fucking object gameplay. <sighs> Riveting. At least you have some pretty cool set pieces in almost every single level to break the monotony of the combat, and admittedly, halfway through the game, you start having that classic Lego comedy on originality. But man! The first couple of levels are so boring, to the point where I seriously thought about asking Zanny if I could review another LEGO game! A 
Hey, yo, why would you fucking make me cover Lego the movie the video game, dude? It fucking sucks. Nobody else wanted it, and you signed the contract. So get fucked, cunt. Get back in the basement. Oh, god damn it. But even though that good comedy and originality is present in this game, the gameplay really isn't. Besides the one-button mashing extravaganza, you also have puzzles that even a five-year-old wouldn't spend more than a couple of seconds, boss battles simpler than my fucking chest tattoo, and worst of all, teasers like riding a freaking giant motorcycle in the middle of a highway while being chased by cops, except fuck you, here's some more shitty platform. The only redeeming quality, like I said, is those sort of chases slash falling sequence where you either move slightly to the left or right, or shoot X amount of dudes while running away from something. It's not that the gameplay is there, but at least it's cool as fuck, I guess. Alright, picture this. Take the safest possible LEGO gameplay, pair it with a already made plot, in this case the movie where the game is based on, I mean the clue is in the fucking name, and the result ends up being a subpar LEGO game that mostly feels like a way to make a quick buck of the IP. Are you still not convinced from staying away from this game? Fine, let's read some reviews from Metacritic then. 71. <laughs> And this one has an 80? It's 70s and 80s out of 100 across the board! What? <laughs> We're definitely getting to the bottom of this. Let's read some of these, shall we? <clears throat> Let's begin, shall we? The first comment comes from our friend, Mazi Small. And he has the following to say. This game is pretty awesome. I've played it and I am impressed by the story and the development team. It was the best LEGO game ever. Simply love it. P.S. The story deserved a 10 out of 10. So why are you giving it a 9? Huh? Up next we have our friend Daniel N. Would love to know what that N stands for. This game is fun and stylish compared to other LEGO games, but there's something about it that just seems unoriginal. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Of course, we can talk about LEGO the movie the video game without mentioning our friend Ad... Adas2906? Adask2906? Uh, yeah, we're going with that. Well, this game was um, interesting. I don't really know what to say about it. Now, Mr. Adask, I'll, I'll call you Adask, is it that the game was interesting or is it that it's quite the opposite? The fact that you don't know what to say about it, maybe. That just implies it wasn't that interesting. Just food for some thought. And finally, because we're running out of time, thank you for that, Zanny. You only gave us six minutes. <clears throat> Matt Barker has the following to say. It's the worst LEGO game so far. They didn't fit the story. Do you find yourself in the position without reason? Absolutely phenomenal, a poetic, poetic sentence from our boy Matt Barker. Truly magnificent. I think it will be great, but when I play, I discover the game just normal movie game. Isn't fun like other LEGO games. Truly remarkable. And thus concluded the beautiful Metacritic lego the movie the video game review thank you so much for watching my part i will now be delivering you to mr pilps as it's cold as fuck right now and i'm only wearing a robe only but don't worry i'm pretty sure uh, mr pilps can't get a worse game than mine right 
Well, hello, it's me, Pilps, or better known as that guy on YouTube who is in love with gunpowder and cannons a bit far too much. And it's now that part of the video where I talk about the best one in this list of LEGO games, Jurassic World. And I'm allowed to say that because this is the first and only LEGO game I've ever played and hello, it's Jurassic Park. My inner 90s child is having an oh, aneurysm that two of his God. most favourite things growing up is combined into a video game. So, here we go. First, I'm shown an interesting cinematic intro of scientists taking care and studying dinosaur eggs in a lab. This is where you are greeted by the makers of the game, Titty Games. Next you get to hear my god awful sneezes in which without a fail I have to do at least three of them. <coughs> One time I did eight sneezes, I thought I was going to die. Next you are greeted by that beautiful soundtrack we all know and love, and the infamous toll gates to Jurassic Park. World. Whatever. Park sounds a lot cooler, okay? It even makes more sense. The dinosaurs had their own run running the world. It's ours now. We put them in a park and, you know, it doesn't matter. Next we follow a monorail and show the park in terrible resolution so then I had to change that. This is when I figured out that this game doesn't actually support mouse and keyboard. Well, it supports keyboard, but it doesn't support mouse. I, I don't know why. Like I said, at the beginning, this is my first time playing any LEGO game ever. So if this is a thing for all of them, um, all I can say is LEGO obviously doesn't have faith in its target audience, aka kids, to move a mouse around. But somehow definitely has faith in them creating monolithic structures and vehicles that they definitely did not ask their dad to help make them because they didn't understand the manual and they kind of still trust the kids not to eat them. Yeah. But moving on. <laughs> After all the settings changed and hooking up my old crusty Xbox 360 controller, we were ready to play the game. We're first greeted by an ominous scene. Hey, hey, disclaimer, this is future me just butting in to let you know that Zany didn't read the game's fucking manual and realized this game had four movie campaigns to go through. Don't you feel stupid? So essentially, I made a 20 plus minute long review of all the campaigns, but Zany only wants around six minutes. So, here. Have a quick montage of all the stupid funny moments of the first three movie campaigns before going into the full review of the Jurassic World one. And if you're interested in the full director's cut review of all four of them, then it will be up on my second channel whenever I get round to fucking creating it. Enjoy! We learn that Alan's special skills are digging and desecrating dino skeletons into useful objects. <laughs> A cow surprises the fuck out of me and the kids that I honestly didn't care about in the movie show up. And holy hell, they did not age well, did they? Okay, this scene actually made me laugh. Electric, they run on this uh, track in the middle of the roadway here. Spared no expense. Welcome <laughs> to Jurassic Park. Later on, Ellie wants to help out this poor unhealthy triceratops, so she tries to cheer it up by jumping into its pile of shit. <laughs> this cheers them up, and you can now control him, which is a reoccurring thing throughout this entire game. Sick Dino, feed them some snacks, they help you progress. Which kinda some parts don't kinda make sense because they, in some aspects of the game you find food from their piles of shit. So you're basically feeding them the food that caused them to have an upset stomach to begin with. So I don't really know where the developers were going with that. Gala, gala, uh, gala, oh, fuck. Hey look, more human trafficking. Friendly fire. What are you aiming at? Are the children playing this even old enough to get this reference? We're gonna need a bigger boat. I'm glad this game actually didn't follow the trope of the black guy dies first in the movie. He just gives the Spinosaurus a Nokia 3310 as a farewell gift and gets on out of there. So long, gay boy. The Spino with his brand new phone decides to chase us because he can't figure out how to play Snake on it. But in the middle of the chase, I think he got a call so he decided to leave us be. In all seriousness though, this glitch made the chase 10 times more funny. We were running for our fucking lives with this dramatic music from essentially nothing at all. Great start to the campaign. <laughs> More proof that child humour is fucked up. Angry Raptor with swollen testicles chases people. Montage over. And now Jurassic World. We hop onto the monorail and immediately the bad omen of the hot dog is shown on overdrive with multiple dropped hot dogs. Hey look, glitchy coffee cup. 
I honestly never got this guy's character at the beginning of the movie. You're meaning to tell me that because he's a teenager, he somehow finds the uncoolness of a freaking dinosaur park. Like, you have the chance to see dinosaurs that are alive, and somehow that's not cool enough for him. I swear, the day scientists find the ability to skip teenage years is the day I invest all my money into it. Because teenagers fucking suck. We all hated being a teenager, and teenagers are fucking stupid, know-it-all twats. Anyway, moving on. Hey look, Auntie Claire is unloving and obsessed with her work. One interesting character arc to develop on when the dreaded curse of the hot dog unleashes all the dinos. Welp, at least we know the budget didn't go towards competent staff, keeping to traditions like all the other games I see. Plot twist, I actually did some digging in the game files and this is actually an in-game model of SCP-096's hand as a little easter egg. Don't know why that's in a kid's game, but just trust my word on this one. Very spooky stuff. Hey look, it's Andy from Parks and Recreation. He became a ranger and shoots pigs out of cannons for his pet raptors. A hefty chunk of this game is based around playing as raptors. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Apart from this fucking part where this cliff just wouldn't work. I was trying to climb over this cliff for 20 minutes straight, and every time I got one of the raptors up and switched, the other would just jump down. Even the AI couldn't do it. Hey look, a meat carousel. You had me at meat tornado. Uh oh, Indominus Frankenstein escaped. Oh god. There's hot dog stands everywhere. Don't they know? Hey, um, this part was pretty fucked up. Having animals fight for our entertainment. Not cool, Lego. Not cool. Don't just stand there! It's my first day and they're gonna fire me! I guess they wanted to make this guy sound like an average dumb young adult, but if anything they just made him sound like this guy from The Simpsons. Hurry! We no longer sell the Python Buster! Hey look, driver with plastic testicles. Kinda felt bad for this guy. I couldn't help him out because none of the boys could jump into dino shit to get him some food. Yes, that was a weird sentence. Uh oh, Indominus Rex wants to play with the plastic testicles. Another boss fight. At this point the whole build over the top structures with plastic to distract the bad dino kinda got really competitive at this point. I just wanted to get it over and done with. Plus being a dino nerd kid growing up and being obsessed with walking with dinosaurs, it kinda annoyed me that this fucker's balls of steel didn't just win the fight in the first hit. Blow has cracked the mother's femur and ruptured internal organs. She limps away in agony. Anyway, we drop a car on his ass and he finds out he doesn't like eating plastic. Bad parenting. Help this little guy out and he helps us out. He's cute. Nothing more to say. I like him. Cute dude. 10 out of 10. Cute dino. Holy shit, they're all alive. What the fuck? This is a thing. This fucker is meant to be the ultimate predator and can't spot these guys somehow. I try again to help this guy out, even spawn a freaking T-Rex, but these guys weren't budging. Oh well. These guys somehow fucked this up. I'm telling you, you guys had too many hot dog stands. It's always about the goddamn hot dogs. Do some more puzzles to try and get Andy and the unloving aunt to reunite with her two nephews and that dumb bitch that had to do one job, look after the boys, but somehow still managed to screw that up. They don't get hit by this. Oh yeah, she's dead now. Andy thinks the best course of action for the dinosaurs escaping is to release more dinosaurs. Great idea. Oh no, evil military dude doesn't know about the hot dog curse. Uh oh, Indominus Rex is half raptor. This is also a thing. <laughs> The younger bro hasn't played Call of Duty yet because he's too young, so he isn't a gun expert so he doesn't know how to shoot. Uh oh, military guys are stealing all the dinos and stuff. Yeah, I don't know where they were going with this. Like, it totally came out of nowhere that they decided to stitch up different animals alongside dinosaurs. Like, it's kind of fucked up, but in a silly way. Anyway, evil old guy gets turned into this, which in all honesty seems like a far more worse fate than death. What the hell is even that? Anyway, they try and escape, but the moany teenager didn't pay attention to his science class and accidentally blows himself up. They escape, but the raptors find them. But then, they found out that Andy is their favourite character in Parks and Recreation. So they become friends again. But the Indominus Rex doesn't like that, and actually prefers Ron Swanson, so he wants to fight. With the help from the survivors and the raptors, we fight it out. Then the hot ant releases a T-Rex to finish the job once and for all. 
The T-Rex gets jealous of the Indominus's long arms and they fight it out for the shiny stick. T-Rex wins with the help of button mashing but the Indominus takes a low blow with taking the piss out of the T-Rex's small arms. But the Loch Ness monster doesn't like bullies and does a WWE finishing move on his ass. Raptors, T-Rex and the survivors make up with each other and holy shit Raptors with night vision goggles and a dirt bike sounds honestly terrifying. Well. At least they have the flying unicorn bull, because that would be, um, useful. Holy crap, they're all alive. The end, or is it? Yeah, I have no idea what this is. So, Jurassic World. Cool set design, pretty cool boss battle at the end. Cute little dino dude. And the voices sounded a lot more believable. I don't know if they actually hired the original actors for some extra lines, but they sounded a lot better than the first three movie campaigns. I'll give it four plastic testicles out of five. And that was Lego Jurassic World. All in all, a lot to play. If you like dinosaurs, you like Lego, and if you like Jurassic Park, this is the game for you. If you're a 29 year old male, then the core gameplay can get a bit tiresome doing essentially the same thing over and over. And the humor is well, yeah. This has been Pilps' review. Don't forget to ask Zany for your free yellow Nokia down in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, bitches? Wait, why the fuck am I in this suit? All right, hold on for a second. Ah, all right, much better. So, I recently played LEGO Marvel's Avengers and it was straight bust. I built the bricks, I did the avenging, and most importantly, I lost all my footage because I was recording my second monitor due to not having created content for the past few months. <sighs> So, apart from my little oopsie, I had a blast with the game, except for the controller support on PC, or like, should I say, what controller support? The thing didn't work for one character, and then out of nowhere I was controlling both characters at the same time, but, you know, since I'm a tech guy, I managed to figure it all out. The only thing I had to do was connect the controller, then use the controller to drop into a character, then disconnect the controller, then drop out of a character with the keyboard and mouse, and then reconnect the controller to drop back into a character, now with the ability to switch between both characters. Easy, right? Oh yeah, I might have forgot to mention that this was every time I restarted the game. This piece of <laughs> so in the end I was very immersed in the game, because, you know, in order to play the game, I had to assemble it. <laughs> get, get it? Like... <laughs> Avengers Assemble and like, <laughs> Lego pieces. Okay, okay, I know that was like the best joke in this entire video, but we'll also give some credit to the funny moments in the game, especially remembering how it actually went down in the Avengers movies. I'd like to know why S.H.I.E.L.D. is using the Tesseract to build weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> This game is filled with all these moments from the movies like I am a god, you dull creature. I will not be bullied by Puny God. As well as this. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. This makes it a great experience because it looks familiar, but they also added their own new and fun elements here and there, which makes it enjoyable and not just an ugh, I've seen this before moment, but rather a hey, this is pretty poggers. Yes, I say poggers and ironically on a day to day basis, so don't judge me, okay? Alright, let's talk about the gameplay next. Well, it's a LEGO game, so you have the regular missions where you explore, build, and fight the bad guys, as well as do some small puzzles. But of course, you also have the open world, which is just GTA Avengers Edition. Plus, you can fly around as Iron Man, which is like the most fun and relaxing thing to do. Also, Thanos. If you aren't convinced yet, there's also this. 
A campaign featuring moments from Marvel movies spanning from Captain America the First Avenger to Avengers Age of Ultron. This includes 15 levels plus more in DLCs. There are also over 200 playable characters. Spider-Man Special Avengers team-up moves A crime system Oh, and have I mentioned Spider-Man? Alright, it looks like my time's up. I want to say a big thank you to Zany for including me in this epic Avengers level crossover video. And if you want to see more of me, I make videos on YouTube and stream sometimes over on twitch.tv slash Wyro, with the emphasis on sometimes. Harry Potter, a franchise so popular from his Lego sets that they made a bunch of movies out of them. I don't I, I personally don't get it, but I don't, I don't know. I wish they sticked with the original Lego art style. I don't know why they had to get Daniel Radboy. It's definitely way slower paced than other Lego games, I feel, since it's more strategy based and building based compared to the combat, which is what the other franchises really primarily focus on. It's a good twist on it, and it's the only real way that you could make a Harry Potter world work because they don't go around throwing dukes the entire time. Uh, I will admit their formula for boss battles was really interesting because they use the stage and stage hazards and different items in the stage to influence what happens with the boss and how you damage the boss. I'll admit that's a really interesting concept, but a lot of times it just kind of just turns into another stage since it's just influencing the stage to do one thing and then keep going, which is just the entire game anyway. You can't even play Quidditch. And that's like, you'd think that would be a really fun part of the game of just flying around on the broom, shooting at people, or even just chasing a, a thing. Or it'll be a fun little simulator. People could play that with friends. It'll be so much fun. But nope, you can just run around the stands like a little fucking loser. What can be say mechanics-wise for this first Harry Potter game can be said for a majority of the other games. It's I feel like that's a common trend with other LEGO games as well. What the first game does is pretty much just built up on, on the other one. Oh, built up! <laughs> Holy fucking shit, you just killed that guy! I don't think that this set deserved this much media compared to the other ones like Lego Star Wars, lots of fun, Lego Batman, lots of fun, the Marvel games, lots of fun, a lot of variety. This is just the same characters running around doing the same crap, puzzles, bullcrap. You don't even do that much interesting. It's just looking around at the different Harry Potter spots and being like, whoa, it's made of Lego. <laughs> It's not, doesn't mean it's bad if you enjoy it. I'm not, no hate towards you. I'm just saying for me, it's just not my cup of tea. It's more of a cup of pee, am I right, fellas? So honestly, I would, I'd watch the movies above playing the games. To finish off the Frankenstein that is my video segment, I'll end with an excerpt from my favorite cap chapter in Harry Potter. <clears throat> After defeating Michael Jackson, they finally had the final stick to finish Eeyore's house. Weird how they didn't mention any characters by name in that bit, but hey, what do I know? I actually really don't know why I played LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens, I don't even like ordinary Star Wars The Force Awakens. Being my first experience with this game, I really didn't know what to expect, so naturally, out of fear, I threw the controller at my mum. And then the adventure began, and the beginning of this game is the ending of Return of the Jedi, which made me fear that this entire game was going to be filler. My concern for this game only grew when I realised this version of Chewbacca appears to have joined the IRA. It really didn't take me long to come to terms with the fact that this game was vastly different from the LEGO Star Wars games that I was familiar with playing back in the day, and then I was thrown completely off when the game randomly turned into a cover shooter. Though it's good to see the classic LEGO Star Wars sense of humour still intact, with Emperor Palpatine being more like a giddy paedophile than an evil emperor. Stop!
mean? It was on the profile! I'm, though I don't think I could ever get used to LEGO characters being voice acted rather than just mumbling. So I'm silently praying for iconic Star Wars characters to have a stroke and we're not even out of the fucking prologue yet. Out of the prologue, the game immediately rubs me the wrong way by placing mandatory puzzles in the hub areas just to play for time. This game is such filler. I don't get why this game exists. They didn't make one for The Last Jedi, they didn't make one for The Rise of Skywalker. Surely it would have made more sense to do that, or at the very least wait until you have a full trilogy before you make a LEGO Star Wars game about them. The end result is this game is just so ridiculously out of place that it's hilarious. And it knows it. It oversaturates its missions with puzzles just to compensate for the fact that there really isn't that much source material. And at the end of every mission you stare at a screen unlocking characters that have never existed in Star Wars. Who the fuck is Ilko Munica and when will I ever need him? Turns out this is a real, inconsequential Star Wars character. However, my point stands. I will say it's always fun to slap the shit out of LEGO Stormtroopers, and the cover shooter aspects, despite being a peculiar wonky choice for this sort of game, is also pretty fun. The space flight missions as well are pretty damn entertaining. And then on top of that, the puzzles really do engage your brain, but the issue comes in when you realise you're doing all of this all of the time. You can't really appreciate what you're doing because before you know it, you're doing it again. Anything to make 15 minutes of the movie last an hour in this game, I guess. There are unique moments, and these are always quite refreshing when they come along, but for the most part, it's mind-numbing rinse-repeat. So considering I don't like the film that this is based on in the first place, this expanded LEGO version makes me want to take a bath with a toaster. Though I will say the game redeems itself when LEGO Kylo Ren knocks one out into Darth Vader's helmet. That got your attention, didn't it? Grandfather. Okay, we're talking about a kid's game and I've officially made far too many adult jokes. This is gonna land me on a register, isn't it? It's one thing to play an old kid's game out of nostalgia, but it's another thing to play one that you've never played before as a fully grown man and then explain in court how you walk past a primary school with good intentions. Moving on, this game is not exactly a faithful adaptation of The Force Awakens, and by that I mean the game gives Finn a purpose. It's not a big deal, he has a gas mask, he can walk into gas areas, but it's a positive, I guess. Different types of characters have different roles and can solve different puzzles, so on any mission you've got to lean into the full repertoire of characters at your disposal, which is kind of the bare minimum for a LEGO game I guess, but at least we're hitting those levels, right? Unfortunately this only feeds into the exhausting cycle of there always being another roadblock or obstacle before you have time to appreciate just moving through the world spaces, and the result of this is what should be a fun and entertaining switch off game is just tiring. And it's all because there's not enough content in The Force Awakens to justify its own LEGO Star Wars game, and so the game overcompensates by putting an absurd amount of steps into everything. One of the main missions is literally you just getting resources for the Millennium Falcon to prepare for the final fight, and it's frankly the most boring segment in any LEGO game that I've ever played in my life. The final mission is also spread across like three chapters, which I think just goes to show how fucking daft the extent of the filler in this game actually is. It's not terrible. There is unique thrown in the mix, it just doesn't outweigh the repetition, but then again, I'm not entirely sure what I expected. It just is what it is, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. But what I find especially funny is they have made a 15 hour experience out of a 2 hour movie that makes no sense and it still makes no sense. It's almost like they wanted to commercialise the new trilogy into transmedia as quickly as possible, and that's probably why we've got a game for The Force Awakens, but we didn't get games for either of the other two films in the trilogy, or at least not until now. So if you want my overall thoughts, LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is a game that exists. Yeah. Can somebody shoot me please? Thank you. To end on a positive note, however, this game does have character customization. It took me about six months to find it, but when I did, I understood the assignment. Create an abomination and name it Cole. As cool as character customization is, I really don't understand how this is the LEGO game to hold its value. Making this video cost me 25 quid, and thus the only lesson I've actually learned from this is I need to be sectioned for my own good. LEGO Ninjago the movie, the video game, is a game based on the movie of the same name, without the video game part. It's also the only of three Ninjago games to have gotten a PC release. Thank fuck for that, because the Vita ones leave a lot to be desired. LEGO Ninjago the movie, the video game, is a game largely focused on a group of self-made tech entrepreneurs, taking on the Japanese shark larping mafia led by Mecha G, 
after he has been resurrected as a deity of death and capitalism in the near future of 2026. And in case you're watching this in that near future, Rong Yao Huiji Xi He Diego. The game story starts off on Cyberpunk Armageddon, following Master Wu as he attempts to train his ragtag group of orphaned children consisting of the Fire One, the Earth One, the Android One, the Electricity One, the Woman, and the Dank One. Together, they go off on a magical journey, trying to discover what their real powers are. Or some stupid shit like that. I wasn't really paying any attention to the story as the combat was taking all of it away. Because goddamn, is it good. It's like Majima on crack, but with katanas and the ability to shoot fireballs. Enemies killed in combat drop studs now, which they don't do in many other inferior LEGO games. What, what the fuck? fuck? Killing an enemy also ups your combo meter. The higher your combo, the more value collected studs will have, which you'll desperately need if you're trying to fill up your stud meter. Speaking of it, this has also been changed from the classic level specific meters, with it now being replaced by one omnipresent meter that runs through the entire game. Every time you fill your meter up to a new level, you earn a true ninja point, as well as a gold brick and some custom minifig pieces. The true ninja points can be used in this skill tree like menu, allowing you to choose from a variety of different upgrades which range from having your combo meter last longer and being able to pull off some even cooler combat moves. Any new characters you find come in this kind of blind bag which is pretty cool. Alright, let's talk plots. As I said earlier, Cyberpunk Armageddon. This game starts off with the city of Ninjago being attacked by Garmadon after he leaves his inconspicuous secret evil lair located underneath of a fucking volcano. So. We complete a few strafing runs, killing an uncountable amount of civilians in the crossfire. We then fight our way through the city, make our way through our brand new transformers before then facing off against a tesla coil wielding shark on legs. There's more strafing runs, there's a big laser pointer and a large cat, but a real one, not a lego one. Look, when I said I wasn't paying attention to the plot, I wasn't exaggerating. Though the absolute sleep deprivation might have played a part in that. So, make our way through the docks. Free our fellow ninjas before then going off on our big doomsday adventure. We cross the uncrossable jungle, traverse the dark ravine, find the lost city of generals, and climb the unclimbable mountain. Each one of these new locations holds the secret items that we need in order to give our ninjas their special ninjago power. The android one can freeze bodies of water, the earth guy can break open walls of stone, and fire fella can melt walls of ice. He's also capable of phasing through solid matter itself, but that's besides the point. We make it to the temple at the top of this mountain where it is revealed that Garmadon is actually Lloyd's dad. He's the green one. He, it turns out he's just a massive dick. So we go back to the city to confront the furious feline and defeat it by using a laser pointer and not much else. The end. Very short game, like 8 hours. A part of the credits almost gave me PTSD from being Belgian. The best level comes after the credits actually, which has you play as a shark dude as you stomp and slam your way through the city. Racking up literally hundreds of thousands of stuns in a few minutes. Eight dollars in a steam sale out of... yeah, twenty. <laughs> Why not? Ah, uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. The long-awaited sequel to 2013's Lego Marvel Super Heroes and 2016's Lego Marvel's Avengers. It was released in 2018 for the Sony PlayStation 4, Microsoft Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and various personal computer operating systems to critical acclaim. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. This 14-hour atrocity spits on everything its good predecessor stands for. I simply do not understand how TT Games fumbled this game. They updated the engine, they've been at this for over a decade at this point, and there are a million and one characters. Holy shit, there are so many characters. And I usually like having a lot of characters, but these just make me furious. 
This is arguably America's worst advertisement. And I've seen the head-on commercial. Head-on? Applied directly to the forehead. <sighs> okay, let me get a hold of myself here. This is another one of those wacky comic book plots that the folks under the wing of John Burton have devised themselves. This isn't based on any one particular thing. Let's break it down real quick. This should be simple, right? Well, it starts off with the Guardians of the Galaxy on the planet Xandar and some member of the Blue Man group called Kang, no last name, like Madonna, is invading it with a bunch of ships, and it's just like, whatever, you know, there's just a whole armada of ships, and a ragtag group of intergalactic heroes just have to put up a defense. Well, suddenly, through the power of some time crystal, there's this massive robot called a Celestial, which is a being as old as time. This one's called Eson, and he does nothing except roam the endless cosmos like the loser that he is. So, yada yada yada, Guardians blow him up, but then a massive fucking flying sword comes out of nowhere, and it's Kang's ship for some reason. Everyone blows him and dies. Fade to white, cut to Manhattan. The Avengers are busy twiddling their dicks while Manhattan gets trapped in a time barrier which prevents them from escaping. This naturally draws the attention of Earth's mightiest heroes, and they discover that various rifts are opening up leading to a little bit of an invasion. It turns out that Kang wants multiple key areas of time and space to battle each other for shits and giggles. While in the time bubble, they all split up into little teams and travel through the rifts to medieval England, Wakanda, and some random swamp. They're mostly successful in helping their neighboring time zones, but then they discover the swamp is actually housing the nexus of all realities, and they accidentally murdered its protector, the Man-Thing. This allows the Time Smurf to break the Nexus and merge all of the time bubbles, closing the rifts and grouping all of the locations into one large, ugly-looking displacement of time. This consists of Manhattan, Manhattan Noir, the Hydra Empire, Egypt, Hala, Xandar, the Old West, post-Ragnarok Asgard, Sakaar, Nueva York, Wakanda, Medieval England, Manthing Swamp, the underwater city of Lemuria, the floating city of the Inhumans, Adelan, and at the heart of it all, Kang's Citadel. So, while fending for themselves in this warped dimension, our heroes intercept a signal from a distant source, but can't lock onto it. So, they head into the Old West and get a signal booster, somehow. Discovering the source is nothing but... a space dog? Cosmo the space dog, to be exact. He provides a solution to bringing down the force field surrounding the Citadel, but cannot damage it without being there in person. In order to pad the playtime, I mean transport nowhere, with a KN, to Chronopolis, the Avengers decide that the scattered shards of the Nexus of all realities is the key to generating enough energy to pull in the Celestial's head, which the dog is using as a space vessel, into Chronopolis. In order to find the pieces of the Nexus, they need Heimdall's all-seeing eye, who's powerful enough to softlock my game because apparently Rockstar developed it, and using an ice character to kill a fire demon isn't allowed. Sorry my subservience is at the dry cleaners along with my catatonic brain and clawed out eyes, you fucking morons. But I digress, of course. With Heimdall's aid, the Nexus fragments are collected, nowhere is brought into Chronopolis, Kang's shields go down, Captain America sucker punches Megamind, and his wife betrays him. The end. Alright, so, the plot's a little weird, but it's that right kind of comic weird. Aside from a few stupid gaps in logic to bridge the story along, I think the idea of the story itself is fun enough. So what's my issue? Surely all I play games for is to enjoy a well-told narrative, yes? <laughs> no. I came here to have brain-dead fun, but all I get is tedium at nauseating amounts. Everything here is so much slower in this pile of flashing colors. The animations take like 50 more frames to happen. Boss fights are convoluted. Attacks that used to be instantaneous have a 10 second charge without the output that's expected of charging your attack. And oh my god, finishing the story is such a drag. It took me 16 hours to finish the campaign and I refuse to 100% it. Especially having already experienced part of that journey on the PlayStation 4. And that was dreadful and boring! Have you seen the time it takes to complete this game? Finding and doing the challenges are so stressful and difficult that you are a masochist if you did any post-story content without a guide. That's right. I'm talking to you, Fred. Not only that, 
but this game was so incredibly rushed that I softlocked like four separate times. In one level. That's how incompetent the AI is. And this, the worst part of it at all, to add insult to injury, there was even a voice acting strike at the time, so the voice cast isn't even that good. Only a handful of people reprised their roles. <sighs> no, no hate to the cast. I'm, I'm sure they did their best. I just want someone to pick on. Wait. Oh yeah. There is someone. John Burton. He's been there since the beginning. Directing and producing every single Traveler's Tales game. Manning the helm from the shadows. <laughs> Silently ruining my life. He wishes to destroy me with every new game he releases. But I won't allow it to happen. I won't let your games hurt me, little Jonathan. For what it's worth, I like the shaders. Very cool. Okay, so look at this, right? This is the option screen. This is the options menu, which you cannot navigate with the mouse, by the way. You have to use your keyboard. You can hit display settings. This is the section where you adjust your resolution. But it's also the only screen that I have seen thus far in the menu that has a fucked up resolution with black borders. So you're not sure if it's actually... <laughs> goes to the borders of the screen. Who came up with this idea? They really get right into the action. This is the first 10 seconds of the game. <laughs> is there a point where I actually get to do something in this game? Or is he, are they just like doing... This is very cool, but I'd like to like play the fucking game at some point. Okay, I can, so I can, and if I click... No, that does nothing. What, how do- how- how hit people? Press F2 or any button to start- Start doing what?! What are you talking about? Start what?! F- I have to press the function key on the keyboard to make this happen. H! I have to hit H?! Okay, with spacebar I can change- Okay, and uh, I have to do H, right? How do I pick them up? You can't just tell me pick them up. I'm not actually the guy, you know. I- you have to tell me how to do it. Strength throw. K and H! Okay, I've already forgotten. And K? Okay, no, that's- you just did a weird sex thing with your wife. I hate- I dis- I hate this. I- this- yes, throw him. Airstrike. Attack enemies from above with airstrike. Attack up to- with J H H H. J H J No- J A- What? J J Okay, they not- this is- none of this is happening. Defeat the Dizzy Miner with a flurry attack? I don't work at Maccas. What- how do you do a flurry attack? H. I don't- I can't- I'm not used to using this section of the keyboard for anything but typing. So what- basically she just jumps, but she apparently does no fucking damage. Come on. J. 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 A oh my- oh my cro- Jesus fucking Christ. Can I play Frozone maybe? That's the cool guy. There he is. There he is. I love him. I'm sorry. K and the plus key. What in the fuck? Where is the plus K and the the plus key? Oh, it's W. It's not plus. It's W. It's just incorrectly displayed. No. And this is a giant five-fingered hand because my man is really the artistry is very important for this. Uh, yes, I and now K. You. No, that just switches me to a different character. K. H. Okay, oh, apparently she can just beat up a minecart. 
P the people who developed this game have never seen a fucking minecart in their lives. What is... What? What is that? What is this? Get a game! Please explain literally anything to me! I think I might have a solution for this. Hello, I'm pressing escape. I'm, I'm pre excuse me, I'm pressing the escape button. The way you pull up the menu on the, this computer game is by pressing enter and not escape. I want to use a gamepad. It's not recognizing the gamepad. I can't use the fucking gamepad. This has truly been... A fantastic experience. This is where I reveal myself to be just a massive boomer. Oh, this- yeah, that's the thing that we care about now. There's a shiny thing. The, go here. Don't go over there, you dumb cunt. Oh my god, how long have you been- did you become a grandma yesterday? What do you want me to do, fam? What do you want me to do? Press F2 or any button to start. Start doing what? Oh god, multiplayer, no. I did not intend to do this. Undo! Oh my god, now the screen is split. <laughs> How do I undo this? There was some troubleshooting uh, after the fact and with the fact and I didn't even show how many problems that I had because they were a bit too embarrassing even for me. But if you know anything about my track record with technology, it, they were fruitless. So as a fastidious reviewer of video games, I did what anyone would do. I read the Wikipedia page of the game. Zizek would be proud. And okay, yes, I did also watch a full no commentary playthrough of the game on a channel called Gamer's Little Playground. So that is what I'm mostly basing this review on. Basically, the game is an abridged version of the second The Incredibles film, followed by an abridged version of the first The Incredibles film. And you might think to yourself, hang on, that isn't the order in which numbers go, and I have to very much agree with you, I have no idea why they did this. The storyline isn't just shortened, but also changed in many places to give the opportunity to do more multiplayer stuff and also introduce more playable characters to the game. For example, when they're on Syndrome's Island, uh, Mr. Incredible in the film finds Gazer Beam's corpse, but here he finds Gazer Beam, and then the two of them infiltrate the base together. And from a design perspective, this is very clever, and they do a lot of little things like this, uh, where they alter stuff around to give you an opportunity to try out new and interesting power set, especially the bit where you get to play as the baby. That I found very interesting. What was not so clever was the dialogue, but then this is based on a kid's movie. Just the, the terrible humor, the passive-aggressive, oh, I resent my spouse bullshit that occurs every once in a while. It made me laugh, but not for the right reasons. And frankly, even though it is interesting that you get to play all of these different characters, uh, sometimes they feel a little shoehorned in. During all the sections, the uh, individual characters have certain specific little feats that only they can accomplish to, like, showcase their abilities. But often I realize that, hang on, actually another character that is even here with them could have done this thing, like, way better and easier. Like, the only reason that this character's doing it is because the script said they need to give them an opportunity to shine. Like, if you're trying to reach a high place and you're not using Frozone or Elastigirl, excuse me, Elasti Woman, thank you very much, I mean, you're just doing it wrong. This did, however, add to the sheer variety of levels and different creative, interesting challenges that are presented to the player over the course of the game, so maybe it was a worthwhile trade-off. I wouldn't know, I didn't actually play the game. I did, and just as in the films, like the villains quite a bit, like the Screenslaver, I love the concept of that villain, the aesthetic uh, that runs through the ice cream truck people, Bon Voyage, even as a kid I was obsessed with Bon Voyage, just because I thought the pun was so magnificent. And they do, let's be honest, kind of steal the show from Syndrome a little bit. Overall, I give The Incredibles one cuphead out of one adult man trying to recapture the innocent optimism of his childhood.
Chekhov 27 and welcome to the Lego Movie. Yo, down in front, shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. All right, you little piss drinker. Come over here and sit on Uncle Chekhov's lap. I've had a lot to drink today, and I'm gonna weave you a tale about Lego DC super villains. And I swear to God, if you cry again, I will hang you from the window by your fucking ball hairs. All right, before we get into this, I have to say that it's been a while since I've played a Lego game because I am in my mid 20s. I know this because every day feels like a fucking punishment. My head, back, and cock are in constant pain. And the only thing that brings me any comfort anymore is my collection of Bidoof pornography. The first Lego game I ever played was a Lego theme park game, which was basically Roller Coaster Tycoon, but for children with bigger brains and larger cocks. And I played a lot of Lego Star Wars, but it fizzled out there. I was getting into high school and college after that, so time was thin between school, clubs, and hourly masturbation sessions. But what's it like going back to Lego? Eh, it's aight. I think I'd like it more if I was still a child. You see, children have smaller cocks, which means they're entertained much more easily than full-grown men. This is why women don't play video games because their cocks are too small to enjoy them. In fact, lady penises are so small, yet so massive, that they implode in on themselves to create a black hole. And that, kids, is a vagina. Oh. oh, that's a vagina. The story of LEGO DC supervillains is completely fucking irrelevant because I didn't pay any fucking attention to it. But I did get to make my own character. Gaze upon the majesty of Lego Chekhov. He wears a Gucci Lego skirt that he stole from a small child out of complete necessity. I need it to protect my cock from the wind. In his meaty little fingies, he wields two sausages, which are used for investigation, altercation, and penetration. I'm told that I'm playing as a bad guy, but I prefer to say that I'm practicing a more enhanced form of moral relativism. Enhanced because I'm using sausages that shoot lasers, and morally relative because I do what I want when I want. If I wish to abuse a psychic gorilla by relentlessly fingering it in the urethra, then by fuck I am going to finger that goddamn gorilla. You cannot stop me. I am morally correct because these are my morals. I make the rules, you're stupid, I'm smart, and if you challenge me, I'll finger you too! In terms of challenge, I don't really know what you would want here. It's a fucking Lego game, you know, for babies. If you want challenge, then play a big boy game, like Putt-Putt. This shit is for big boys only. If I see you in the big boy sandbox with this shit, I'm wrapping my big boy cock around your neck and hanging you off the fucking jungle gym. Wait, what was I talking about? But hey, if you like Legos or fucking people before they're of age, this might be a good fit for you. Unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan. It's fine if you want to shut your brain off for a few hours, but it's bogged down by the general monotony that plagues Lego games. There isn't any challenge, the story isn't interesting, the world is fine, but I don't feel any desire to explore it, because the controls are honestly fucked, and there are a lot of glitches. Also, it recorded at this weird frame rate? Well, I'll tell you, Putt-Putt don't do that. All in all, it's just kind of mediocre. Eventually, I just put YouTube videos on in the background while playing. I started with a round of Coco Melon and somehow ended up with Ben Shapiro. Okay, well, I think the number one issue that comes to mind is the inability to have conversations. You can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't care. The I, don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've you, never heard of you. You, and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself of this. And so the alt-right rabbit hole claims another victim. It always starts 
with Coco Melon. Two out of five. It's fine, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who doesn't already have a nostalgic connection to it or happens to be a small cocked child. All right, sir. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the theater. If you come near me, I will suck your dick! In true LEGO fashion, the LEGO movie got a video game which then got a sequel. But I had no idea even existed until I was asked to be a part of this collaboration. Uh, no, I really don't know if the video game follows the same story as the movie, cause uh, I never watched the movie. But I can sum it up to aliens and saving my friends with the power of awesome and this gun I found. I'm not gonna convince you that this game is worth your time or your money. I hated every second of this game, and the most fun I had playing this was the giraffe guy with the strap. <laughs> Aside from Giraffe Guy with the Strap, the only fun I had was Grand Theft Auto. Speaking of which, this game is basically LEGO Grand Theft Auto, just less fun. The reason I say that is because I immediately got into a car and started running people over. Unlike the older LEGO games where the gameplay style is sort of linear going from point A to point B, LEGO Movie, the video game, the sequel, has main quests and side quests. Main quests are for progressing the story, no shit, and side quests are there for filler, but they also give you these special LEGO bricks that are necessary for progressing to new areas, so they're mandatory, but you can also find these LEGO bricks just scattered around the open world, so you might not need to do the side quests anyways. Plus, the side quests are kind of weird. <laughs> like. Searching for... sewer babies? Why are there babies in the sewer in the first place? Yeah, ye <laughs> And no, you didn't hear me wrong, I did say open world. A pseudo open world LEGO game. Yeah, it's at least better than... <laughs> wait, wait, I can't make fun of Legends Arceus and it's open world? But... But that was the only joke that I had! And just like a decent amount of open world games, there's really not a whole lot going on here. The side quests are sort of there. Go here, build that thing, catch some weird heart alien that blows up on physical contact. Hello! Same. But my favorite bit is this side quest where you need to build these generators so you can get this plane to start up. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck. The only reasonable action was to restart the game where it would most definitely put me back to the latest checkpoint. Oh, it it's auto saved me all the way back here. Oh, okay. Uh... Ah, fuck, I forgot about the deadline. Now, before you ask about the combat, what combat? The game's combat is basically press square and watch as you have a seizure trying to decide which enemy to attack. The gameplay felt more proactive while I was riding around on Ultra Kitty murdering townspeople for fun and yeeting sewer babies. This game is the equivalent of walking on Legos, which somehow sounds more fun than playing this. You see my Discord icon? This is how I felt the entire time I was playing this game. Batman, for lack of a better word, is a simp. There are raptors in space for some fucking reason. The aliens don't even look like Legos. They look like Mega Bloks. And these side quests are gonna give me an ulcer like- What? What? Wait a minute, I didn't know- okay. How was I supposed to know I could dive in that water? Okay, Zanny, I appreciate you asking me to be part of this collaboration. Is this video four to five minutes? Uh, probably not! But if I have to play this game any longer, I am going to have a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> Gentlemen, I need you to subscribe. No. So, you made it to the epilogue of this massive project. When I originally came up with the idea of reviewing every game in the LEGO franchise, I never really thought that I would be able to find enough creators willing to chip in to make this feasible, 
I want to give a ginormous thank you to all of the individuals who took part in this mega collab. All of their respective channels and social medias are linked in the description. Please go and support our content as well, as they truly deserve it. The amount of time, work and sheer dedication for this one project truly is unlike anything I've ever seen. This video would have not been possible if it weren't for the contributions of my three curators. The first one being Cole, a man with a large stomach and an even bigger heart. He helped out with basically every aspect of this video. Structure, writing, fighting creators, even down to the thumbnail. Second of all, I would like to thank Hunk, who we could have not made any of these sleek transitions without all of his insane blender skills. He's an insanely talented individual and I highly recommend hitting him up for a commission through his Instagram. And lastly, Vexus, despite only joining onto the project a little over three months ago, but giving it his all from the very first day, from handing in his chapter a month and a half before the due date to letting his PC run overnight so he could get out the credits sequence in time. I truly couldn't be more thankful for this amazing group of friends, and they all deserve like a million dollars or a million subs, whichever one comes first. That being said, with the zany cinematic universe fully established, I must get going. I've got plenty more ideas in the pipeline. If you want to stick around for all of that, go ahead and subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and join the Discord. I'd really love to get a form of consistent uploading going. Man, it's a good thing that Skywalker Saga isn't releasing for another few months, eh? Or we'd all look like idiots, dropping this massive video days before the release. What, what the fuck? fuck?